Now I've made some additions to the non-sequential file we just produced. I've added uh, a source filament here, and that's um, a, a filament lamp which has 5 million rays for calculations, 25 rays for drawing on this uh, layout plot, 1 lumen uh, of power, just give it a normalised uh, power source. It's 8 millimetres long, it has a radius, a turn radius of uh, 1 millimetre, and it has 8 turns across that 8 millimetre length. So that's my little filament source in there. And then I've added some detectors. The first detector I've added is here. It's at the film plane. If we just take this back here, you'll see it's at the film plane and it's positioned relative to object number four, which is the film plane uh, uh, annulus. I have another detector in here and that's at the projector stop. You see it's positioned relative to uh, object 8. And then I have a final detector here uh, which represents the screen. It is 5,000 uh, millimeters uh, away so I don't show it on the screen here because otherwise it would be it would just dwarf the optical system. But what you can see here is the results of a ray trace and you can see here the results of the ray trace at the exit pupil of the condenser or at the uh, object plane of the uh, projector, whichever way you prefer. You can then see an image of the filament being formed here at the uh, film at the uh, stop of the projector. And this is actually an interesting one just to look at in a little bit more detail. If we just pull this up you can just about see the image of the filament there. There's the you can see there the uh, the film gates illumination. But let me just draw a cross section through this so that you can see more easily what's going on here. And if I use this little manipulator here, you can see as I just slicing through that, you can see the image of the filament source being formed right at the stop of the projection uh, lens, which is exactly where, where it ought to be. If I then go and look at the projector screen uh, again, you'll see I'm getting a nice uniform distribution on the screen. And it's useful also to look at the um, cross-section views here, because if I look down here at the condenser, it's a little bit brighter at the edges. But because the projection lens has a slight roll-off in its relative illumination, the final projected uh, image is actually really very uniform indeed. You probably noticed also that on these true colour plots, the uh, colour looks a little bit orangey, and that's because if I look at the properties of the source object, I look under sources, you'll see that I've set the color of the source, color temperature of the source, to be 4000 uh, degrees. And that's actually reasonably cool for a, a projector source. So let's just make that 7000 degrees instead. And you'll see that the um, uh, the colour swatch here changes and it's become clearly much brighter. And what we'll do now is just repeat the ray trace, or it's become much whiter rather, not brighter. I'll now just repeat the ray trace. I'm going to clear and trace the rays. And this is tracing 5 million rays uh, through this system. Uh, and it's a very well threaded calculation. So if we look at the uh, Windows Task Manager, you'll see that all, hot, all eight of my CPUs are in full usage uh, whilst this is going on. 
and let's now just exit that and you can see now we're getting exactly the same results but with a, a much whiter source we're naturally getting much whiter images throughout the system. Uh, the, the basic performance hasn't changed you can see the slightly bright ring here on the condenser uh, and you can see that at the film plane we're actually getting a much uh, cleaner looking uh, film plane.